hi guys welcome back to my channel if this is your first time tuning in welcome don't forget to smash that subscribe button for me thank you so listen we are going to talk about three things the new lawsuit diddy and cassie's former makeup artists and 50 cent and netflix diddy documentary netflix won the war the bidding war and it's going to be good you guys so first up diddy is facing yet another lawsuit filed by a former model who claims diddy enticed her with promises of korea advancement crystal mckinney is her name she claims in the lawsuit obtained by TMZ in 2003, when she was only 22, she was invited to a man's fashion week event at Cipriani downtown in New York City. She met Diddy at an event and he invited her back to his studio. She says shortly after their arrival, Diddy and several colleagues were drinking Hennessy and passing around joints. She took a hit which she said was very powerful and felt as if she was floating. She claimed the joint had been laced with a narcotic or other drug. Crystal says Diddy then demanded she follow him to the bathroom where she says he forced himself on her, began kissing her and shoved her head down to his crotch before commanding her to suck it. She says she refused, but Diddy pushed her head down and forced oral S-E-X. She started walking away, but then felt woozy and lost consciousness. She says the next thing she knew, she woke up in a taxi and realized she had been sexually assaulted. It's unclear from the lawsuit if she's referring to the alleged forced oral S-E-X or another S-E-X act that might have occurred while she was unconscious. She claimed she was afterward blackballed from the modeling industry, got severely depressed, and attempted suicide in 2004. Crystal says upon seeing news of the lawsuits filed by Cassie and others, she knew she had a moral obligation to speak up. She's seeking unspecified damages. If she was blackballed, does that mean she told people? Did she do a police report? Because if I wake up in a taxi, I would go to the hospital and get an all-word kit done just to make sense out of it. All I know is Diddy is effed. He is F. He's such a monster. He's so demonic and he's a liar that anyone cannot come forward and they could be lying. You just never know. I believe a lot of true victims will come forward, but let's be honest, there will be a few lying ones mixed mixed up in it, right? Um, but that's what he gets because he's such a disgusting, evil, demonic monster of a human being that the lines will be blurred between the true victims and a few liars that will be mixed in it. So I watched a video of Crystal when she was on MTV's True Life, I'm a Model, where the camera was following her around, showing her day-to-day -day things. And from her attitude, she's just, she seemed like the type, you know, where I'll F you up, I don't take no mess. So I don't know, I'm hoping from her attitude that she's she probably got a police report done at least. Again, from what I've got from her, her waking up in a taxi, and I just, she seemed like the type that would go to the hospital and, you know what I mean? I just don't, I don't know. I don't know her, but from what I've got from watching her and her, you know, attitude behavior, she just, I don't, mm, anyways, I don't know. We'll just have to see, okay? Moving on, Diddy and Cassie's former makeup artist is speaking out. She recalled seeing Cassie badly bruised after a fight with Diddy. Her name is Myla Morales. She worked with both Diddy and Cassie, and she said she saw signs of abuse when Diddy and Cassie, you know, when they were dating. Did you know about the physical abuse? Did you ever hear stories no, I, or beating her? I did not know. I did not know. But I witnessed it. 
Myla recounted an incident at the Beverly Hills Hotel one Grammy weekend, more than a decade ago. What did you hear? What did you think you were witnessing? I don't, I don't even want to like go back to it because it's like, it's just, it, it's, it's triggering. All I witnessed was him walking into the room and saying, where the f is she? And I, I, and I, I, I didn't know what was going on because I was like, I just woke up from a slumber. And next thing you know, all I hear in the, from the bedroom was, you know, just, I don't want to like go back and think about. So you're at the Beverly Hills Hotel. You know, you hear something. You don't see Puffy actually physically attacking her, but you no. hear something. I did not know what was going on. I just, all I can think of was to get her out of there. What happened when she appeared, when you saw, when you saw her? What she had, her? she was bruised. I mean, badly bruised, like knots on her head, a black eye. All I cared about was to get her to safety. And I took her into my house and kept her there for a few days. And I literally called my friend who was a doctor at the time to greet her because we couldn't bring her to the hospital. We didn't know what the hell to do at that yeah. point. You know, who are we gonna call? I, I'm scared, just even talking about this. But In an interview with Myla, she claims that one incident that took place during Grammy weekend at the Beverly Hills Hotel over 10 years ago will never leave her memory. Myla says, all I witnessed was Diddy walking into the room and saying, what the F is she? And I didn't know what was going on. I was like, I just woke up from a slumber. And the next thing you know, all I hear from the bedroom was just that I don't want to go back and think about, she said. I did not know what was going on. All I can think of was to get her out of there. You know this though, hold on. You notice they always say they don't know what's going on. Believe me, if someone is in the next room, right, getting beat, you're going to know they're getting beat. You're going to hear shuffle. You're going to hear scream. You're going to hear a lot of, because you know that he's an uh, ish talker. While he's beating her, he's talking ish to her. All kind of nasty names. You know that. So believe me, she knew. I think they say they don't know. So people don't ask them, how come they didn't call the police? How come they didn't report it? It's always the aftermath that they always see. Watch everybody's video, interview. You will see, they always say, it's always the aftermath. Oh, the person come out, they were bruised up. You know, I didn't know, I just know the aftermath. I saw the bruises. It's always that. And they're lying. They are lying. You think someone like Diddy, he's a monster. You think this guy beat people up outside. He beat people up in the hallway of hotels, outside in public, by cars. So you think Diddy is not going to beat someone up inside somewhere, in front of people? You think Diddy, he's a raging monster. You think he's going to be like the type to like, oh, let me just like pull her slowly in the room and then close the door. Really? When he's coming in raging with an effigy, you think he's going to really care? That's why they all have to sign NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, because so the person can be themselves, the person can say anything, do anything, that agreement will protect them. And the other party cannot say anything. They cannot say what they saw, what they heard. They can't say anything. So that's why they all do that, okay? So you think Diddy care who's around? Diddy beat people up in front of people. Diddy used to beat people up at parties. Diddy even beat Cassie up in front of people at parties. Beyonce, Jay-Z was there. He didn't care. This guy do not give a F. But let's move on. Myla went on to describe Cassie's appearance when she returned to the room. She was bruised, I mean badly bruised, like knots on her head, a black eye. All I cared about was to get her to safety, and I took her into my house and kept her there for a few days. I literally called my friend, who was a doctor at the time, to treat her because we couldn't bring her to the hospital. We didn't know what the hell to do at that point. Who are we going to call? I'm scared just even talking about this, but I feel like somebody has to. Yeah, now. You see what I mean? They all, he was protected by everyone. They see, but they can't say. They can't talk. This is nuts to me. She said, we were always scared of Puff. He's a powerful person, and we don't know what would happen to us if we spoke out. Another source who spoke anonymously 
also told Extra about what they witnessed following the alleged uh, incident. Cassie definitely had a black eye for sure. Her lip was swollen. She had bruises on her body. She looked really bad. She was advised to go to the ER to rule out major head trauma, but she was too scared. She was just scared and deflated. It was really sad, the source said. Yeah, there's definitely more tapes. Yeah, outside him beating people up. Yeah, they're going to come out with more. Yep, someone that's reckless like that with no control, zero control, raging. Yeah, yeah, he didn't even care who, where he was at. He didn't care where he was. He would just like, he even smacked Drake, okay? He smacked Drake. Ugh, it's crazy. Everybody could get it, and everybody did get it. Anyone could get it. Like, he's really the type of person anyone around him could get it. Could get beat, men, women, kids. This guy did not give a damn. So for sure, there are more tapes. And I'm sure they will be released. Okay? Um, so let's move on. 50 Cent sells Diddy documentary to Netflix after bidding war. Man, everybody wanted that documentary, you guys. 50 Cent's multi-part documentary about the sexual assault allegations against Diddy was purchased by Netflix. So there was a massive bidding war over the documentary, which was produced through 50's G-Unit film and television studios with multiple networks and all of the streaming platforms attempting to land the series. It's coming out sooner than later. Netflix won the bidding war. Oh my gosh, I don't have Netflix, damn it. <laughs> I have to see this. You know what I think? Let me tell you. I think a lot of people that we're not hearing from publicly they are in the documentary i believe it yeah like the people that we have now heard that are we expecting to hear and but they haven't say a word i think 50 got them to talk in the documentary oh i can see that i can see 50 interviewing people like mary j blodge <gasps> oh my gosh misa hilton even naomi campbell yeah, I think a lot of people, we think thinking like, oh, yeah, they're not speaking out. It's because they are waiting for the documentary. Oh, my gosh, it makes sense. It makes sense. I don't know. Let me not jump to a conclusion. <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention this. Misa Hilton, you know, Diddy's first baby mother, right? Justin Combs is the, the son that they share. Um, so she's speaking out. She had this to say. She says... I am heartbroken that Cassie must relive the horror of her abuse, and my heart goes out to her. I know exactly how she feels, and through my empathy, it has triggered my own trauma. These young people were raised by women that want the best for them. We put God and education first and have always been united in our mutual effort to support their dreams. Two of the youngest do not have their mother here, and it has been a duty to support them. He says, their father needs help, and I am praying that he truly does the personal work and receives it. That's what Misa had to say. Yeah, so she used to get beat too by Diddy. And there was one, one time he was beating her outside. She ran underneath a car just to get away from the beatings. Do you understand that? This is... Okay. Yeah, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. You guys, thank you for tuning in. Please like this video. Please share this video. And don't forget to subscribe. Okay? And I will see you on the next one. Peace.